India today successfully launched a long-range missile that's able to hit parts of China and Europe with a nuclear warhead. It's named after the Hindu god of fire. It's a 50-ton, three-stage rocket that puts India in a small club of nations with the power to develop and build long-range ballistic missiles. But in contrast with North Korea's recent failed missile test, there is hardly any international blowback over India's new weapon. The chief Fox Sport correspondent, Jonathan Hunt, has the news. And Jonathan, uh, Indian military officials seem... I don't know, pretty fired up about this development. Yeah, they see it as a huge technical achievement and a big step on the path toward becoming a major world power. They're also quick to point out that this is not supposed to demonstrate any offensive power, but merely to act as a deterrent. And what it's about here is the range of this missile. They've had nukes for quite some time, but now they can aim those nuclear warheads, or will be able to in a couple of years, east towards China and west toward Iran, and that is the key for the Indians here. Sure. But most interesting in all of this is nobody seems to care. Yeah, very interesting. The U.S. officials say that this is very different because India is a stable democracy as opposed to North Korea, who attempted that failed launch last week, which they say is an unpredictable dictatorship. Now, the, uh, although the State Department spokesman, Mark Toner, did seem to struggle a little today when asked to explain how this fit into the administration's general call for restraint among nuclear nations in their testing programs. Listen. We believe, uh, you know, uh, they have a solid uh, non-proliferation record uh, and that they're, uh, you know, that they're, uh, they're playing a significant role internationally on the issue. The bottom line, U.S. officials feel that India is a friend and having one more friend with the ability to hit Iran is probably no bad thing, although they'd never say that in public. No, but that, that's well put. <laughs> Jonathan Hunt, thanks so much.